the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of the Sim of the Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing and everything going on. And we are here for our what third edition of the year so far as we kind of get in 2021 underway still. And uh, things have been a little slow with it being the off-season of the real-life racing world. But this is when we start to hear news of real-life driver changes. We start to hear news or prospects of what's going on at Daytona for the 24-hour real-life race. These are when we start to emulate the real-life racing. For example, the sim racing variation of the 24 hour so things will start to pick up very soon in the news world of sim racing but for now we have a few things to talk about uh i will make a few apologies i'm probably or at least one big apology i'm a little out of sorts today so just a fair warning i woke up way too early not enough sleep and i'm just i've got a stomach thing i'm not in the best of moods but i'm still here on a friday still in a good mood or best when I say not the best, not the best condition, but still in a good mood. How's that? I think that's a fair angle on the whole thing. So what is going on in the world of sim racing? I personally have a very big weekend coming up. Uh, for me, I don't know how many of you are doing the 24-hour Daytona race on iRacing, but me and my good friends will be. We'll be running a couple of cars there, actually, and that starts tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., uh, that is occupying a good majority of my weekend, but things start tonight. Tonight we have the Oval Series. I'll talk about that a little later. So I got an Oval Race. We got a 24-hour race, and then if somehow I could recover, I have a Road Race on Sunday as well, which is way too much racing for one weekend, but a lot of opportunity for fun. Let's put it that way. Uh, beyond my life, what is going on in the real world of sim racing, if you want to call mine the fake world of sim racing? Starting off with iRacing, Shell wins his first iRacing World of Outlaw Sprint Car Race. You know, this Sprint Car Series has been a very tough series to break into in terms of making a name for yourself because it's really been heavily dominated by Alex Bergeron uh, for the most part. Anyway, at this point in time, it's great to see a new name on top. So much so that I don't even know his first name. Where is it? Where is it? Um, oh, gosh. Here we go. Tyler Shell. Tyler Shell actually beat Alex Bergeron. And uh, so he is a new winner, first time ever in that series. Alex Bergeron did take second, and Cameron Merriman took third. Uh, that tightens uh, or extends Bergeron's lead slightly. So he now has a 30-point lead over Cardwell, who actually had a rough night coming in in 12th place. So that race actually had some pretty big ramifications when it comes to the championship with Bergeron extending that lead quite a bit. Uh, Shell now in sixth place with 472 points after having a great weekend. Uh, just to give you an idea, winner is $10,000 of a $25,000 purse. Uh, and if you want to watch the eight, the action, that's Monday night. Monday will be the next race in this series. As we're getting uh, towards the end, I think, on that series. So uh, things will keep heating up, I'm sure. Team Redline, well, they're going to be in our news a couple of times. Uh, Team Redline goes 1-2 at the 2021 BMW Sim GT Cup opener from Daytona. So congratulations to those guys. Uh, the next race on that one is March 7th at Suzuka. Uh, details on this, the drivers of the winning car were, were Jonas Wallmeyer and G Gianni Vecchio who held off the number two car for Team Redline of Max Verstappen and Daniel Giancadella. Uh, finished in a photo finish, by the way. Uh, pole sitting car of VRS, Coanda Simsport, Mitchell DeJong and Josh Rogers uh, finished in third place. In this one, we have $4,200 prize pool split amongst the top three finish finishers in the split with the winnow doing duo. This is per race. Each race features a mandatory driver changeover and a $4,200 prize pool per race split amongst the top three finishers in the top split with the winning duo taking home $2,400 of the $4,200. Um, so five, four more races in that coming up, but Team Redline Blue winning, Team Redline Orange in two, two and VRS Coanda Simsport in third spot. Look at how many teams participated, by the way. And look at some of the teams that they beat out. Um, big names, big names. Uh, what else? Uh, defending champ 
Job, back on top of the Porsche tag, how, Porsche tag Heuer eSport Super Cup at Barcelona. That is our thumbnail of the day. Just gotta love, just gotta love seeing a car coming off the curb, getting two wheels up in the air. In this case, he's probably almost three wheels up in the air. That was our thumbnail of the day, but uh, and that being the car of Sebastian Job, uh, and this was at Catalonia that he won that. So there he is winning over Josh Rogers. There's Josh Rogers once again. And Charlie Collins sitting in third. Mitchell DeJong in fifth. Just looking through some names. Holzman, Patrick Holzman in ninth. And uh, who else? Uh, now this is a big deal. So this is at the Fanatic blog. I saw it on the Fanatic Twitter page. Uh, all over, and this is a very big deal. So Fanatic's groundbreaking GT3 partnership means teams earn real points for sim racing. Oh, they even put it. This is big news for sim racing. We've all seen real-world pro drivers compete in sim racing, but it has always been for fun, for charity, for practice, or for bragging rights. But what if sim racing events counted towards real-world championship? We've made that happen. Their multi-year deal with SRO Motorsport Group introduces a brand new concept to merge sim racing and motorsports even closer together. Fnatic is now the title sponsor of the GT World Challenge powered by AWS and the new GT2 European Series. Um, and they're talking about real cars in that case. Um, for the first time uh, during all five rounds of the GT World Challenge Europe Endurance Cup, and total 24 hours of spa eSport contests will be hosted using Assetto Corsa Competizione. Official game, blah, blah. Uh, both pro and silver teams will nominate one actual race driver to participate in the virtual race, which awards championship points. The official rules and regulations will be announced at a later date. Anyway, this is a big deal. This is... Uh, uh, in our 2020 recap video... Uh, or our three-wide version, I should say. We talked about the impact of these new affiliations and how powerful the relationship between sim racing and real-life racing have become in this last year. Um, here is a great example, uh, maybe the best example I can think of. So this is a very big deal and something we'll have to keep our eyes on moving forward. Um, and of course, they're going to promote the M4 GT3 and the Fanatic steering wheel. Also, this week is the new CSL Universal Hub. I've seen a few reviews out there in the world. Uh, I just got my hands on the new McLaren rim, by the way. Um, so I'm going to be putting a podium base on one of my rigs. And I have the, uh, the hub that makes the McLaren wheel work on the podium. And I have the wheel itself. But this is the Universal Hub. And this is a new version of it that no longer has Xbox compatibility, which I believe actually lowered the price. Um, and it is a inexpensive way of getting any wheel rim you want. So here they're showing Fnatic wheel rims. But essentially, any wheel rim you want, you could bolt up to this sucker. And uh, this entry-level Universal Hub is only 150 bucks at this point. And they're ready to go. Um... Anyway, very cool. Lots going on at Fnatic. Great to hear. Great to see. Uh, Formula One, or I should, I'm sorry, let's start this one over again. R Factor 2 has released the Formula E 2021 and truck di track updates, including, including the Attack Zone. So the Attack Zone, one of those new uh, Mario Kart features of Formula E, also to be done properly, or I should say be done, in R Factor 2, yet to be seen how they do it versus the real life version. But Formula E 2021, here it is at the Steam Store. Free content update to Formula E 2020 DLC, by the way. Uh, what is an attack zone, in case you don't know? An interesting, and it is kind of a cool idea if you think about moving forward. You know, we, we do talk from time to time about real life racing and what is it going to do to stay current stay relevant stay modern as the years tick on and things change um what is an attack zone formula e an interesting innovation developed to both aid with overtaking and also add an additional level of viewer intrigue and strategical variation to formula e races 
Attack Zone has been used effectively in Formula E since 2018-2019 seasons. Essentially, Attack Zones allow drivers an additional 35 kilowatts of power that can be freely deployed in order to aid overtaking a rival. So basically, you put your car into an attack zone to get a 35 kilowatt boost. Instead of push to pass, you would have to drive through a specific zone to pick up that push to pass, so to speak. Um, anyway, that's being implemented into our Factor 2 with the Formula E. And they have a video here. I always have the links to everything we're talking about in the description of the show here on YouTube. So if I'm blowing through something and you think, you know, I'd really like to hear or watch that Formula E attack mode video, cool. Check out the links, go to the R Factor story, go to the video, and you can watch and listen to the whole thing yourself. So, but they are giving an explanation of attack mode, how it works in the sim. You can see this is in sim footage they're using for that demonstration. Uh, in addition to the Formula E, uh, more on the competition system, week three version of it. This came out two days ago. And earlier this week, we started four new series, including two with the Alpine A110, bringing more diversity and some pop properly licensed community content to the competition system. So they're rolling out more and more. And, and this has been a pretty big and pretty fast rollout with weekly updates. Ah, Remco Major is... Uh, asking some of the questions. Is there a penalty for signing up to a series and not driving? Was asked by Remco Major. Great question. In iRacing, that's a penalty. No, we intend to give penalties to people who register for a session and then don't drive. We intend... No. But signing up for a series and not driving is somewhat... Okay. Okay. So if you sign up for a race and don't drive, an actual session, you are penalized. But if you sign up for a series and not make a race, you are not. Uh, what driver aids are allowed on competition system? Right now, only auto clutch. Uh, can you view the standings? Blah, blah. So, anyway, uh, question and answer is there in the other blog. So two blogs from R Factor in one week. Uh, and well, usually it's a monthly blog. You know, this is a monthly blog, but it seems that it has really picked up the pace and become a lot more than that with uh, one yesterday and one the day before that as well. So great job by R Factor. Uh, apparently there was a SFE, Simula Formula, Sim Formula Europe, competition uh we're gonna congratulate some drivers Congr congratulate to driver of the event daniel kiss and signed by nikki lada cap winner anetta janosk did you guys see that i don't know if we covered the nikki lada hat there it is they did a little contest who's your favorite driver the inner classics virtual dutch gp um and they announced that winner during the live broadcast but the winner of the event was erhan jajowski Risto Caput came in second, and Peter Burlock, Burjock, uh finished in third. I should know how to say Peter's last name. I've said it. Patar, I should say, too, as well. Sorry. I'm so dumb American when it comes to accents and things. Uh, Formula 2020. What do we call this game now? Formula 2020. Patch 1.15 came out a few days ago on the PS4, Xbox, and PC. I didn't look at the patch notes. We're kind of... <coughs> Excuse me, we've been through a lot of them, but there were patch notes. We can take a quick look. But there was a new update to that sim. Um, 115, they're calling it. It did it, added the ability to enable equal performance in time trial. Marcus Armstrong now has correct nationality. Addressed an issue where Artem Markolov would be quicker than intended. Pedro PK now has the correct numbers. Anyway, um, so a bunch of... Uh, updates little things in their patch i think they did a driver update too yeah here look so it's time for the final driver rating update for formula 2020 who's gone up who's gone down find out here another link for that one and we'll see if you want to see what they've done to finish off the season and uh did you did you see the key word there by the way <coughs> excuse me it's time for the final, final 
driver rating update to F1 2020. Why? Well, it is 2021. Uh, it is now time to be anticipating. You know, uh, they've changed the release date for the Formula One series each year based on trying to get closer and closer to the timing of the real life season. Uh, they are well off rotation in the beginning, six months late even. And they're trying to get it closer and closer. So we should start hearing, smelling, seeing even F1 2020. And here's your final indication of such uh, that they are final driver operating. Uh, driver change. So Brendan Lay is, or Ble Brendan Lee, sorry, Brendan, uh, is now with Ferrari. So the two time F1 esport champion will sop Mercedes for Ferrari in 2021. As he joins that team, um, big name there, and I think that's all I really had from F1. Yep, yep, that is okay. WRC, WRC update is available on all platforms and prepare the ground for the upcoming FIA Rally Star DLC. Huh? All right, so we have some patch notes we can check out. Uh, FIA Rally Star Update Patch Notes. A new update for WRC 9 is now live on the Epic Game Store. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS. Here are the version numbers. Of the, update. Uh, the update is bedrock for the upcoming FIA Star program, but also fixes some issues you've reported, such as the drop of frame rates while using steering wheel on next-gen consoles. Uh, FAA Rally Star Mode. This mode is content... This mode and its content will only be available through the purchase of the FIA Rally Star DLC, which is coming on a later date to the Epic Games Store. FIA Rally Star Game Mode, a new track, brand new car, the M Sport Ford Fiesta Rally 3, uh, general fixes, and all of that. So, anyway, Rally Star Mode. And I think now, so, but I thought this led to a competition. Can I read more on this somewhere? Um, yeah, hold on. I thought we had... No. Okay, WRC 9 chosen for Rally Star Talent Search. WRC, so this DLC is part of this Rally Star competition. Sorry, I didn't have my windows all ready to go there. The newest edition, the highly successful game, blah, blah, blah. Um, the first step in the new begins in DLC W 2021. Okay, so they're a little late on it. The first step in the multi-phase selection process begins in December when a DLC downloadable content for WRC uh, open to all players between 17 and 26 years old. Oh, forget you. The scheme gives the most promising drivers the opportunity to take part in training and coaching programs supervised by the FIA. Seven finalists, including one female driver, could ultimately start their international car career before aiming to join. So, seven finalists from sim racing, including one female. That means eight. No, including means seven. So, six men, one female. So, anyway, okay. I do not... Oh, wow. Pandora's box, Sean. Pandora's box. Do you really want to dive in? I, you know... I've had arguments with people, and I've defended the women's series events, things like that, that have been done. Uh, there is a need to promote more women in motorsport. But in a competition like this, when there's only seven finalists, I'm not sure that I feel it's fair or right, even, to six random, including one. So if a woman earned her right into the seven, does that mean there'd be two women i don't know i it just that seems odd that they would do that and is that a, a woman sim racer being included with the six or is that a woman amateur driver i don't know anyway i i we'll find out later uh anyway that's what's going on with that whole rally star there's really not much information on it but it's going on and they've done this before by the way uh, Ritza studios automobilista 2 there was an update on the 16th right after our last show uh, this is version 1.1.05 update. 
Our track team has added the final details to their rendition of the incredible Circuit de Spa Francorchamps. And that's how things are looking at Spa in Automobilista too. Wow, that's beautiful. Nice work, Ritza. Really nice work, you guys. Really, really nice work. Uh, what else? Is that it from them? I think that was it from them. Yep, yep. Uh, Fanatec, Fanatic, we talked about the Universal Hub already. Yep, but here is a video. It really allows you to do whatever you want to do. All right, and we talked about that incredible competition. Uh, Real race drivers earning points in the Fanatic GT World Challenge. Uh, it sounds a little like there's going to be a little favoritism. Like it sounded like the fans were going to vote, right, for... Which driver? Uh, this will kind of play out like uh, uh, other times they've allowed the fans to give drivers an advantage, which doesn't always play out fair, but that's the way life is, right? Life, life ain't always fair. Uh, congratulations to Oldest Putkilis. 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 Sorry. Sorry, Oldest. Uh, he was the hot lap hump day winner. At WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, that was in the new IndyCar um, Pro IndyCar uh, PR18, I think they call it. Uh, that was a fun event. I choked. I choked once again. I was looking pretty good. I finished third in the first race, and I was up to second when I self-spun on the first lap of the second race. Um, Oldis was going to run me down, though. I was looking at the lap times of, of him running down. Uh... uh Mike, oh, what was his name? A real life uh, pro IndyCar uh, driver, Mike. Oh, I can't remember his last name. Uh, was in the lead, but Oldest ran him down. It was a, a really fun event. SimiCube making an announcement that they are now working with Team Redline. You think Team Redline and Fanatic have worked together for, I don't know, five, six, seven years? Apparently that's come to an end, and it is now SimuCube that will be the official steering wheel, or wheel base, I should say, of Team Redline. So congratulations to SimuCube. Great pick up there. Congratulations to Redline. Great pick up there. And we'll see how that works out for your team moving forward in 2021. I'm sure. Just fine, I'm sure. Uh, McLaren's going to be making an announcement for their eNASCAR roster. So they uh, they're just telling us to stay tuned. Uh, big news. McLaren Shadow, we mentioned this when we talked about the teams for NASCAR, but they're going to be entering into this year's eNASCAR Coca-Cola Championship. Welcome to the team, Allen and Blake. Um, not Blake Allen. There we go. Allen, Bose, and Blake Reynolds. Uh, those are the two drivers that are going to be representing McLaren in NASCAR. Pretty badass. Congratulations to all those people. We'll watch them. Uh, Euro Truck and ATS are both doing a, a joint. One of their they they do this a lot. You got to take your hat off to the the team at Euro Truck and American Truck Simulator. These guys are always doing charity type events all the time. So their newest one, Hauling Hope event, virtual truckers of the world. We are still set, enduring hard times. So the world continues to battle COVID nineteen. Uh, anyway, they're asking people in last year in March, they did something, truck at home event, blah, blah, blah. This time, it'll be your own personal journey. Our slogan is hauling hope. And the goal is for you to deliver this fragile and precious cargo undamaged. So you'll need to be extra careful in making your delivery. The cargo will have zero damage tolerance and will require a fragile cargo sticker level one to be carried on the truck. Uh, reward personal goal your contribution of seven or more deliveries of COVID-19 vaccine cargo will gain you a world of trucks achievement and a prestigious hope trucker insignia cab item to hang in your truck that's pretty cool 
Uh, the event will be concluded on February 7th. So if you're into ATS or ETS, this is another one of those really cool events, charity type events that they have going on, raising awareness, and should be fun. And you can get the Hauling Hope badge for your window. Uh, check this out. <laughs> I'm just going to play and let you look. Introducing the MR C01 Racing Simulator Curb Simulators. This is the first product to be born of a new partnership between Aston Martin and British technology company Curve Racing Simulators. And this bumper car could be yours for only. What was the price on this? I think I saw a price tag of like. $76,000 or something absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. It was... Can I find that information real quick? Bear with me. Give me one moment while you watch. I will see if I can... No, it wasn't there. It was... Links for news. $75,000 is what I was told by uh, TFR sent that in. Thank you, TFR. Uh, anyway, would you want you want one? You want one of those? Sure, I'll take one. I'm not paying you $75,000 for this. Anyway, I will have a link to it. You can check it out for yourself. Uh, Jim Beaver Esport is hosting a uh, event. Uh, it's the Jim Beaver Esport second annual General Tire E Short Course World Cup presented by Fistful of Bourbon. Streaming live this Thursday, January 21st. Oh, no, that was yesterday. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I had that in my news for last week. All right, this is new news. Um, I'm going to leave it muted for copyright. Uh, anyone recognize that face? So, a lot of people have been talking about the reboot of Inside Sim Racing. Um, here is the latest video. This was put out three days ago. Inside Sim Racing TV. It brought to you by Sim Motion. And here is Darren Ganji announcing his partnership or affiliation with or, or of him and Sim Magic Sim Motion. Uh, Sim Motion is going to be the official distributor for Sim Magic, and there is Darren. So you can check that out. I'll have a link there, and you can uh, tell me your thoughts on the reboot of Inside Sim Racing, a, a show that I am very familiar with, as you well know, many of you well know. So um, there you go. Here's that Aston Martin bumper car. This is the thoughts on Reddit uh, regarding that simulator. <laughs> Aston Martin's new AMR C01 racing simulator looks familiar. Tell me I'm wrong by creepy land guy. Uh, <laughs> there's a similarity for sure. Uh, this is posted by Alst ALSD07. Started 10 years ago on an ironing board. How many ironing board sims have we seen with a G27? Uh, it's no tr triple screen, but it's perfectly cable, hidden beauty, and it's his. Today, he finished off with the VRS wheelbase and Cube Control's wheel. Nice choice. What a journey, and man, he's loving it. These wheelbases are incredible. Nice looking, nice looking setup. Look at that fan. That is some super fan power right there. And that looks like a Formula V. Is that a Formula V up on the wall? Did you used to race Formula V? That's badass. Now, we've seen some Sims, but what about this one? <laughs> this is posted by Ruby Grainman and his kayak turned simulator. You can see that's a total like Microsoft's wheel on there, by the way. See that? Oh, God, that wheel. Oh, God, that wheel. But that's pretty funny. Just throw it using the kayak. It's got a chair. If you can get the pedals to stay put and you got a wheel there, hey. It works. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> you got me there. You made me laugh, uh, Ruby Grain Man. Then we've got this DIY thing. <laughs> Look at this. DIY or bust. <laughs> He's got slippers for grippers or sliders. I don't know. He's got weird metal plate just bolted. Some sort of old wheel stand bolted to wood for stability. 
where there's a will, there's a way. Who did this? This was by Stork Yabish. <laughs> Stork Yabish. We got this. I have considered this material. He's calling it Unistrite. Ah, who, sa, dude. Posting this one. Uh, one of my next DIY plans is going to incorporate this type of material. If you go down to Home Depot, you'll find this stuff. Get yourself a metal blade for your saw, chop saw, and you can cut it to any length you want and just bolt it together. Erector set style. That is an erector set right there for sure. Uh, but it'll work. It'll work and it would be cheap. So I applaud you on going with what I have considered using for my own DIY project, but aho, aho, su, dude. Nice looking rig there. And that takes me to the pit pass. As you know, we used to give the race results for all the Sim Pit community racing going on. And, you know, we've been trying to trim this show down to its bare essence for it to be a, a quality news channel. And we're still going over 30 minutes, which is probably a little bit too long, but we've cut out all the extra distraction. And one of the things we've done, thanks to Devin Booth, is we've created the Pit Pass. The Pit Pass is the weekly update and standings for all Sim Pit racing. So just because Devin did that, and I'm encouraging you to go check out that video, doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about Sim Pit racing. I'm going to be talking about Sim Pit racing in the advance. I'm going to be talking about what's coming up, what we're streaming. If you want to look back in the rear view at what happened, you're going to want to check out the pit pass with Devin Booth. But for me, I've got the oval race tonight at 5 o'clock my time. I'll probably get on the air 5, 5.30 or so. We will be at Iowa, and it's been a rough season so far. But despite that, Tyson Landis is in the lead of the points as we go into Iowa tonight. Then on Sunday, we have the Simpit Road Series, which it's not the LMP, it's now GTE cars. Gonzalo Perone leading the way as those guys go to Nurburg Grand Prix, the Grand Prix version of Nurburg, followed by the combined Grand Prix with Nordschleife uh, next week. So that's what's going on there. But what's really going on? And this is tomorrow. Tomorrow it'll be on at Simpit Live on Twitch. It'll be on at KA Sim Racing on Twitch. It'll be on at Devin Booth at Twitch. All three of us, all three of us, me, Amir, and Devin will all be streaming our versions of the 24 Hours of Daytona. That starts tomorrow at like 5 a.m., 8 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, 5 a.m. Oh, it's going to be endurance racing at its best. It's going to be brutal. Hopefully, it's going to be awesome, and hopefully, our teams have some good luck and some good success out there. And if you're running in the Daytona 24 hours, I wish you, your friends, your co-drivers, and your teams the best of luck as well. That is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of the Sim Pit, the Pit Stop, and everything we're doing here. Have a great rest of the weekend, everybody. Get out there. Do some sim racing. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.